Hi, this is Debbie and I'm sharing a video I created for my Doodling with Debbie series for Sam Says Stamp. For last month's video of a woman in an umbrella with textured background, I went for lots of technique and detail. For this month, I wanted to mix it up with an easy heat embossed and watercolour background and include my key tip for keeping your white embossing white. I'll be using the Heart to Heart background stamp from Sam Says Stamp. And while I get myself set up, I want to apologise for my battered, lockdown hands, suffering from lots of hand washing, gardening and being covered in paint. I bet I'm not the only one in this boat. I love Daniel Smith watercolours, but I'm also really enjoying exploring other watercolours too. And today I'll be using the Magello Mission Gold watercolour set. I squeezed the tube paint into the wells of the palette and created a swatch chart to go along with the palette so I can easily find the colours I want to use. I'm using Fabriano Artistico Extra White Cold Press Watercolour Card which comes in a 5x7 gummed block and I've removed a piece of the card from the block with a palette knife and then taped it to a board with painter's tape. I'm going to be using a lot of water at first and taping the piece down will help prevent it warping. I'm using a broad brush to liberally apply clean clear water over the card. I'm using an artist brush but use whatever you have to hand, a paintbrush will work just as well to get a good amount of water on the surface of the panel. I chose an analogous colour scheme from the Mission Gold Paints, blues and violets. In particular I used Prussian blue, bright clear violet and red violet with a touch of peacock blue too. With the paper wet the paints mix and blend creating beautiful new hues. I've not mixed these colours together on the palette, all the action is right there on the paper. With a background like this, I aim to get a variation in the depth of colour with some darker patches and equally some lighter areas too. And a great way to do the latter is to add water splashes which push the colour away to the edges of the water droplets. I also added splatter from a solution of Perfect Pearls for a bit of sparkle to the mix and then dried with a heat tool. So it is only at this point that I'm getting out the heart to heart background stamp in order to white heat emboss the pattern. And this is my tip. You could have heat embossed the pattern before water colouring, which does allow for lovely puddling of the colour in the wells created from the heat embossing. However, you often get paint over the embossed lines, which isn't always the easiest to wipe away without disturbing the painted background. By heat embossing after water colouring, you don't have that problem. Your beautiful white embossed lines will stay pristine and white. So going back to what I'm doing here, I placed the heart to heart background stamp in the misty along with the watercolour panel. I kept the paper in place with a piece of masking tape as I'm going to stamp this multiple times to get a good impression on the watercolour card. I treated the card with anti-static powder to prevent the embossing powder randomly sticking everywhere and then I inked the stamp with Versamark ink and gently pressed the stamp onto the card. My tip here is not to go in with heavy pressure but gently rub the stamp onto the card and repeat stamp several times. This way the resulting embossed lines will be as delicate as they are intended to be rather than heavy, heavy and squished out by too much pressure. I sprinkle the card with white embossing powder from Samsa Stamp, making sure to cover the whole area and then gave it a good tap off before using a hot heat tool to melt the embossing powder. I love splatter. I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, but for me it adds extra layers of colour and dimension and as such interest. I splattered with leftover paint, perfect pearl solution and white gouache. These may muddy the white lines a little and you could do this step before heat embossing to prevent that. But sometimes the splatter leaves a less than smooth surface and I didn't want to risk lumps and bumps preventing me from getting the best embossed design. I think we're all missing seeing people at the moment, family and friends in particular, and so I pulled out the Miss You dies from CZ Design. These dies have the letters and then a background piece. I wanted to cut the words themselves from toning card, and so I took another piece of watercolour card, and using the same red violet and bright clear violet paints from the Magello Mission palette, I quickly whipped up a custom piece of coloured card dried with the heat tool and then ran the letters through my die cutting machine. I also cut the background piece from the plain watercolour card while I did so. This way everything matches up nicely. 
I really like dies that have the background piece to the letters as it makes the sentiment stand out and pop from the background. I did the letters to their background with Jean K Connect glue and then added foam adhesive to the back. I took a coordinating sentiment from the reverse Miss you sentiment strips from CZ Design and added foam adhesive to the back of that too. I then started playing around with placement. I did debate whether to cut the watercolour piece with a circle die as I felt the sentiment was getting a bit lost. However, in the end, I plumped on simply trimming down the background a bit. This leaves the focal point less lost in a big space and also frames the panel nicely with a wider border from the card base, which I'd cut and scored from ivory card. I added foam adhesive to the back of the panel and added it to a card base and then in turn added the Miss You dies and coordinating sentiment. I die cut a few hearts from the leftover watercolour card using the Holiday Shapes dies from Simsa Stamp and I did these with foam adhesive before taking them up a notch with a coating of Nuzo Nuvo Crystal Glaze to give them a lovely shine. Following on from the shine theme, I also added Nouveau Droplets and Little Things from Lucy's Cards Pearls. I'll leave links in the YouTube description to the products that I've used today, as well as a coordinating link to the blog post over at LimeDoodDesign.com. I want to thank you for joining me today, and if you've enjoyed this tutorial, I'd be delighted if you give it a thumbs up and to subscribe to this channel. Also, if you'd like to get notified when a new video is out, don't forget to hit the bell button next to the subscribe button too. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.